supreme Lord is the greatest violation of God's law. Unless one is reinstated in his own constitutional position, it is not possible to understand the Supreme Personality or to be fully engaged in this transcendental loving service with determination. Om Only one, yeah, two, or few, okay, it 
give your blood, it means in the future somebody can give blood back to you. Right? You give it back. You can get it back. Similarly, you build an old people's home, then when you become old, then maybe you will also get to live in the old people's home. Or you donate to the school. So next life, you can also get education and go to the school. So, you know, people who do material pious activities, some wealthy businessmen, you know, they like to donate to different charitable institutions. So it comes back to that. And if one donates for some uh, mayabada or impersonalism, propagate some merging into the Brahman, coming to the oneness of the boy, then that brings you to that level also. You become qualified for entering into their kind of uh, consciousness. But if we perform pious activities in relation to bhakti yoga, we perform, if we per perform some piety for a devotee, then that qualifies us for devotion. Prabhupada quotes a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam that by serving a Mahatma, a great soul, Mahatmas are all devotees, right? Devotees are all Mahatmas, right? Mahatmas are always chanting the glories of the Lord. So the devotees are all Mahatmas, and when we do service, Mahat Sevam, serve the Mahatma, serve the devotees, then Mahat Sevam Dwaram Mahur Vimuktes. It opens the doors to liberation. We become qualified to go in. It's like your entry pass. Have you got a ticket? You know, you go to the program. Have you got a ticket? Some temples, you know, that you want to get prasada, you get the tickets, you get the vouchers. You've got to have a voucher to get this out. Where's your ticket? So, by serving the Mahatmas, you become qualified for liberation to enter into the liberating platform. What is the liberating platform? This Vajanti uh, Mantra that they, they engage in my service with determination. That is the liberating platform. Devotional service begins on the liberating platform. And we qualify, we qualify to, to enter into that liberating platform, on that, to come onto that loop. It's a bit too high for you, please. Too much echo. you know. We qualify, we qualify to come on that liberating platform by serving the devotees, by doing some service. Right? Uh, we, Prabhupada explains in the Purport how the devotees are traveling everywhere just to simply to liberate the conditioned souls. They give mercy. Wherever the devotees go, they're trying to distribute some Krishna consciousness. Just like Narada Muni, transcendental spaceman, he's going everywhere playing in Spina, and he liberates so many people, right? He, he met Dhruva Maharaj, and he instructed Dhruva Maharaj, and he brought Prahlad's mother to his ashram, and he spoke the Shastras to Prahlad's mother, and then he met Magrari the hunter, and he made Magrari the hunter and the Bodhi, and then he meets King Pachini Barishat, and he talks to him, and he tells him about Puranja. Oh, Narada Muni is giving so much mercy everywhere, preaching to people. And in the same way, we are, the devotees are also going everywhere, distributing Krishna consciousness in a similar mood, performing the same kirtan of the holy name, distributing books, distributing prasada, organizing festivals, having Krishna conscious programs wherever they go, to try to give some mercy to the conditioned souls. 
right? You're giving more people the opportunity to do service. And by doing service for the devotees, then they become qualified for devotional service. Just like the, the one man was here earlier this evening, the one Chinese man, he constructed the temple at Kulong. Huh? Kulong. Kulong, right. And he put all this roofing up, you know. He met a devotee, he met a devotee and he wanted to do some service. And so he built a temple, then he constructed all this. And he came here tonight, he sitting there with his speed bag, chanting, you see? So he became a devotee, he did some service. Service qualifies us for devotional service. And he said, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasati said, Shrusha Shrosha Dadanashya Vasadev Kataruji Shammahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Nashevana by, by serving the devotees who are free of sin, great service is done. By such service, one gains an affinity for hearing the message of Vasudev. Right? Devotees are free of sin. It's mentioned here. You have to be free of sin to take up devotional service. We have to have performed some Agyata Sukriti. Unknowingly, we did some service. We, didn't, we weren't conscious of it, that, oh, I'm going to get bhakti from this. If I, if I buy this book, I will get bhakti. We didn't think like that. Or if I give a donation, I put some money in the box, or when the devotees go on Sankirtan, and they say, give donations, people, you know, people don't think they're going to get bhakti. They don't think I'm doing a Gyatra Sukriti. They don't think like that. They're just saying, oh, let me do something, let me help. So that, but they get it, even unknowingly. Just like the child doesn't know when they put their hand in the fire, they will be burned. But they get burned. You don't know. The same way people do some pious activity, they get the benefit. They didn't know that they would get bhakti, but they get it. But the result is that they become attracted to want to do more service. They serve Krishna. They do some pious activities and they gradually, because they did some pious, some punya karma, Agyata Sukriti, it qualified them to go on. And the result was that the devotees instructed them in transcendental knowledge. Because it's not only just acting piously. They have to also understand something about what is their situation. If we're thinking, I am the doer, I gave donations then they won't get much bhakti like that. But the devotee instructs them, the devotee tells them that, you know Prabhu, all that money you've got, it all belongs to Krishna. It was given to you by the grace of Krishna. And it's meant to be used for Krishna's service. If you don't use it for Krishna's service, you will use it to serve Maya. You will have to pay so many doctors or so many lawyers and you will have to pay so many medical bills you see, or legal entanglements. The money will be used in so many unnecessary things. But if we recognize this money belongs to Krishna and it's for Krishna's service, then that is the proper understanding. Because Krishna says, those people who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life, and who are free from the duality of delusion. What is a delusion? Delusion is to think, I am the doer. I am the master. I am the controller. 
I am the enjoyer. We are thinking like this. We are thinking, I am the best friend. Who is actually the best friend? Who is actually the doer? Who is the enjoyer? That is all. This is Krishna's position. We are all his servants. So the devotee will give this transcendental knowledge to the conditioned souls. If we see that they're acting piously, they're doing a little service. So we want to also enlighten them. We have to give them the knowledge. Right? Because people who are, by serving those devotees who are free of sin, by serving the Vaishnavas and the Vaishnavis, then great service is done. By that service, one gains an affinity for hearing the message of Vasudeva. In the beginning, we don't like to hear very much. And people, oh, what's this? Oh, Bhagavad Gita? Oh, no, I'm not going to sit there. No. You know, in the beginning, we're not, where is the prasad? <laughs> I you know, it's probably I also recognize that, you know, you sometimes we would say, bring this man to yourself. You know, the man is disturbing the class, he can't sit quietly. So Prabhupada said, give, give him some prasada. And as soon as he got prasada, then he became quiet. So, trying to hear the message of Vasudev, then is, uh, there's a qualification. Qualification is we need to get the mercy from the devotees. We serve the devotees. We do a little service for the devotees. And because we serve for the devotees, we offer some service for the devotees, therefore Krishna purifies the heart and we get more interest to hear. When new devotees, uh, Prabhupada, immediately, a new devotee, tell him to go to the pot room, clean all the pots. Prabhupada sometimes do like that. Oh, you're a new man. Okay, go in the pot room, wash all the pots. Why? Because Prabhupada knows that they're going to get a lot of mercy by doing that kind of service. The, uh, Roma Padaswami, very senior devotee, a few years ago he was the chairman of the GBC. He was describing how he first became a devotee, that he'd heard about the Krishna consciousness movement, and this was way back in 1970. And uh, he drove his car over to, to the temple, he drove a long way, and he got to the temple, and it was Sunday afternoon, and they just finished the feast, and he came there. And, and so they brought him in, and he said, oh, welcome, you know. And immediately they said, can you, can you help us here? And they put him in the pot room. There's a big stack of pots, you know, the whole place was just full of pots. And they said, could you just help us here clean some of these pots? So he was there. He was there for many, he said he spent three weeks in the pot room. For three weeks, was in the pot every day, cleaning the pots, cleaning the pot. Yamuna Maharaji also described, when she met Prabhupada first, Prabhupada gave her a thought. He said, here, take this pot, clean it. And the pot was all black. And so she cleaned the inside and gave it back to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, clean the outside also. She had to clean it, clean it, get everything off. Finally, she got it all clean. Prabhupada said, okay. <laughs> this Prabhupada knew that cleaning the pots is cleaning the heart. Right? You do seva for Krishna. It's not ordinary. It takes away all the dirty things from the heart. So Krishna is saying, acted by, maybe we didn't act piously in previous lives. And up to meeting the devotees, maybe we also never acted piously in this life. But as soon as we meet the devotees, we get immediate qualification because the devotees give us the opportunity to do service. 
very powerfully we're able to get rid of all of our sinful reactions. Right? Devotional service is described to be like a blazing fire which burns up unlimited amounts of fuel. So if we do devotional service in the proper way, then it destroys all of our past sins. The cause of sin was ignorance. Ignorance. Our ignorance was forgetting Krishna and thinking we are the enjoyer. Because of ignorance, we have sinful desires. Sinful desires led to sinful activities. And sinful activities caused us to take birth again in the material world. So Lord Krishna is explaining here how we can become qualified to get out of that entanglement. First of all, Agyata Sukriti, unknowingly, or if, if we know then that's even better, but generally we don't know in the beginning. We don't know what we're getting into, what's happening. You know, somebody gives you prasada, somebody tells you to chant Hare Krishna. You don't think that one day I'm going to be a devotee. But somehow we take an interest and we start to do something to cooperate, to help the devotees. And then they give us more knowledge. They're telling us it's all Krishna's. Everything belongs to Him. He is the Master. We are His servants. That takes us out of ignorance, out of delusion, and then we become qualified to do, to, to remember Krishna, we start to think more, right? From karma yoga, jnana yoga, and then from jnana yoga goes on to dhyana yoga. The, in the beginning we're working for Krishna. We don't know why we're working or why we're doing these things. Oh, this is what we do, we're devotees, we all do this. And then gradually we get knowledge, we're awakened. We come to the higher platform, we get some jnana, jnana yoga. And the put the knowledge, then we start to remember Krishna more. And meditation on Krishna. A devotee's meditation is through service. Other people, they're meditating, they stop all activities. But in Krishna consciousness, our meditation is through the activities. It go, all the activities are done in, in consciousness, in meditation on Krishna. It's like we're off, you may be offering arti. It's a meditation. You may be cooking for Krishna. It's a meditation. Mm -hmm. Speaking and hearing Srimad Bhagavad Gita is also a meditation. We're thinking, hearing about Krishna. And then from meditation, the, it leads to Bhakti Yoga. We awaken our devotional mood for Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada explains that if we want to perform devotional service in this manner with full determination, we have to come to this kind of platform. We have to come to get rid of all the delusion, the ignorance. So this, this is important. We could call this ignorance false ego. Due to false ego, we are identifying with the body and we are thinking we are the doer, we are the enjoyer, we are the controller. Krishna wants us to give up this kind of ignorance. Of course, this is difficult for us because this conditioning is very deep. It's ingrained within us. Just like sometimes you try to clean the, your cloth and the cloth is, is so dirty, it's ingrained with dirt, you know. 
and they scrub it so hard to get the dirt out. So similarly, our contaminated consciousness goes very deep. And to get rid of all that contamination, we have to take to intense devotional service that devotional practice begins through hearing and chanting. We have to do these things for a long time. It's not just one once hearing. It's not just one time chanting. Although the Shastra does say that simply by chanting the holy name once, one can one can be relieved of all sinful reactions. However, it's pointed out that one, in order for that to work, you have to chant the holy name with per without any offense, with perfect purity. We have to chant the pure name. And that is not such an easy thing for us to do, to be able to chant the, the name purely. We are practicing devotional service. We're trying to perfect it. We're still practicing. We're not tempted, but we're trying to become perfect. So it's practice. As we, Prabhupada explains, just like the child has to learn to walk. The walking ability is within the child. It's inherent in the nature of the child that she can walk but it takes some practice. And similarly also, it is inherent within us to be Krishna conscious. Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Satya Kabuna. The love of Krishna is established in the heart of all living entities. Shravanadi Shuta Chiti Kori Hiruda. It has to be awakened by hearing. So our original consciousness is Krishna consciousness. That is the consciousness of all living entities. But some are more covered than others. We are also covered. We have to remove that covering, that false ego, that identification with matter. And it, it is removed by carefully chanting the holy name, calling out to Krishna with love from the heart. Right? There is qualities in chanting. So we want to develop the pure quality. His Holiness Gorgovinda Maharaj, when he was present in this world, he used to say, I want to open a school for crying. He said, I want, want to teach all of you how to cry for Krishna. Right? We, we can cry for material things, but to cry for Krishna, to cry, to chant with your name, that we don't do. I was in Calcutta Temple for some time in the 1970s and we had one life member, one businessman, he used to come and sit with me and he used to confess to me. He said, I can cry for my wife, I can cry for my children, I can cry for my business, but I cannot cry for Christ. So he lamented in this way. We should also lament. We are often very conscious of our material relationships, but we don't have a lot of consciousness for Krishna. Krishna, however, is our dear friend, our best friend. He's with us. Birth after birth, Suri Dam Sarva Bhutanam. He's 
the best friend. We have many friends, but there's no better friend than Krishna. And he's accompanying us in this material world, one life after another, waiting for us to turn to him. We have to try to understand this. So it takes some practice for us to, for it to get through, for it to get through to us, for us to understand how kind, how patient Krishna is, how much he cares about us, and we are casually living our lives, enjoying the world, or trying to enjoy in forgetfulness. So, if we want to perform this devotional service with determination, then this is required. We have come to the platform of doing devotional service. Now we have to pick it up with determination. Determination is mentioned by Rupa Goswami in his Upadesha Amrita that he describes six qualities which are necessary for advancing in devotional service. Utsaham nischayat taryat tatkat karma prabhati sangat jagat tato vritte shabir bhakti prasiddha To advance in devotional service, these six qualities are very nice. Enthusiasm, patience, and determination. We have to be very determined if we want to succeed in this Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, I never said it would be easy. I said it's simple. I never said it would be easy. We have to be very determined. We have to really want to be successful in this. It's like determination. I remember some one lady, a young lady I knew, she was trying to pass her exam. She wanted to get a scholarship to go to America. She was living in China. And she was taking examination to get scholarship to go to America. So she was so determined. She memorized every word in the dictionary. <laughs> she could memorize the, every word in, in the meanings, you know, because they have this English language test they have to do. So that that's very serious, you know, so determined. And you have also Mohammedan people, how they memorize everything from the Quran, all the Holy Quran, they will memorize so many things. And similarly, you know, we should also develop that kind of determination, study the Shastra, memorize Bhagavad Gita, chanting slokas, all of these things will help us to become more determined in our effort to go to Krishna. Okay, any question? We want everyone to go back to Godhead. We don't want any failures. Right? The teacher feels very happy if all the students pass. Do I all get good marks? Uh -huh. A devotee who is full of devotional service of Krishna. He does all the devotional service. What happens if he or she has a bad attitude? Which means bad attitude plus devotional service. What is the consequence? They have done devotional service. Perfect devotional service. Bad attitude, bad attitude. What is the consequence? No, they're not, that's not perfect devotional service. <laughs> It's a contradiction. You're saying they did perfect devotion of service, but they have a bad attitude. The attitude is very important. The 
If you have a bad attitude, there's no perfect devotion in service. Why you should have a bad attitude? If you have a good attitude, you should have devotion in service. You know, if, would, if, would you like someone to serve you with a bad attitude? You know, say, go away, I'll do it myself. You know? <laughs> if they have a bad attitude. So in the same way, Krishna will not accept service of someone with a bad attitude. When we serve Krishna, we must have a good attitude. We should, it's called devotional service. Right? We do service with devotion. Devotion means you have a devoted attitude. That's not a bad attitude. Devotional service, a bad attitude can, cannot be devotional service. Acceptable. Krishna won't accept that kind of service. Krishna doesn't need our service. He's got a lot of people all serving in there in the spiritual world. He doesn't need our service. We need the opportunity to serve Krishna. We should understand how fortunate we are to be given the opportunity to serve. If we don't take it, then we are foolish. We miss the great opportunity. And if somebody's done, gone through the activities of devotion, of, of bhakti yoga, with a bad attitude, then he's a foolish person. He's wasting his opportunity. Just like if somebody comes to do arti or to cook, and they think, why I have to do it? Why I have to cook, you know? And they do it like that, with a bad attitude, grudgingly. Then this is not devotional. This, well, we could say this is devotional service in the mode of ignorance or passion. So you don't get the real benefit of bhakti yoga. If you're acting, even though it may look like bhakti yoga, but it's influenced by Rajagun and Tamagun, then Krishna is not going to be very pleased with that. We want to please Krishna. Yes, Krishna Mani.
generally Maya Devi has to attract the materialistic people. She tests everyone. Who is really genuine? Who, who is really sincere about going back to Godhead? She doesn't want people to go back to Godhead if they're just going to give trouble to Krishna. So she tests them by offering different kinds of material allurements. So in the same way she came to Haritash Thakur to test him to see was, it, was there any material desire there? But he had no material desire. He passed it. So, this is the glory of the devotee. But she, my lady is showing how exalted devotees are. Okay. Prabhu? Sometimes we, we don't have determination, sometimes we lose it. Shaken. Huh? Determination gets shaken. Yeah, shaken. Yes, because of why we lose our determination, because of material desires, because of our attachment to sense gratification. Therefore, we're not so steady in our devotion of self. Because within our mind there's still some hankering towards some material pleasure. But when we are very focused on Krishna consciousness and we give up all thought of sense gratification, then we will be very determined. So we have to remove all these material desires because that's what weakens our devotional self. So the sadhana is very important, strong sadhana, good chanting, intense chanting. Devotees ask Prabhupada how they could be more dedicated to book distribution. Prabhupada told them, he said, you should chant 16 rounds without interruption every day. He said, that will give you great determination. He said, if every day you chant your 16 rounds uninterrupted to give you a lot of spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for stopping. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So we'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much to His Solidarity and Shri Maharaj. Um, also to all of you who came here, because it was such a short notice and so many of you took trouble to come. And that's greatly appreciated. Tomorrow morning, His Holiness will be giving the Srimad Bhagavad in class. Those of you who can make it, please do come. Thank you very much. Maharaj is also having some fruits to give away. And if anybody would like to give some lunch fee for Maharaj's trouble, you are most welcome to do so. Thank you very much.